There are some decisions you don't want to agonize over. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 dumbest moral choices in video games. All we want is to live free. This is an illegal gathering. Disperse immediately, or we will open fire. So for this list, we're only looking at choices where only one of the options makes sense, as it's something a reasonable person would do, making the decisions ridiculous and easy. But there are still massive spoilers ahead. Come on, you prick. I taught you everything you know. Not everything. Number 10, The Sword of Aeons, Fable. It's time I found where I belong. I know it isn't here. This ancient longsword is one of two most powerful weapons in the game, and you have to be on your worst behavior in order to get it. At Fable's climax, the hero must murder his own sister to bring the sword up to the full power because she's part of the Archon's powerful bloodline. However, there's just one problem. You're not presented with this choice until after you defeat Jack of Blades, the final boss. So you don't even need such a powerful weapon. And then if you destroy the Sword of Aeons itself, you're granted the equally powerful Eivos Tear. So what exactly do you gain by killing your sister? Number 9. Rescue or Harvest the Little Sisters, Bioshock. The Little Sisters are unsettling at best when you first encounter them, but they're the real victims at the heart of Bioshock. The result of generic experiments, they travel through Rapture gathering Adam, the city's most powerful substance, and you can choose to rescue them or harvest them, taking all their Adam for yourself. But the choice has very little gameplay repercussions, since if you rescue the sisters, they'll leave you a gift of Adam outside a gatherer's garden, meaning you'll end up with basically the same amount regardless. If that wasn't bad enough, the game's evil ending isn't remotely satisfying and not considered canon. You're better off just rescuing them all. Number 8. Save John or the Money. Red Dead Redemption 2. I head down there, I'm dead in five minutes. I got a family. That's more important. Uh, maybe you're right, but uh, you want the money? You head down. Maybe this choice would be harder if it wasn't so easy to accumulate money in Red Dead 2. But by the time you get to the end of Chapter 6, you've probably bought everything you could ever need. So why would Arthur return to the camp alone and try to rescue the gang's savings instead of helping John get to safety? While we know that John will survive no matter what, since he has to go on to start in the original game, Arthur is in the late stages of tuberculosis at this point. So why would he need the money anymore if he's gonna die anyway? Of course we're gonna help John. I'm gonna get you out of this bullshit if it's the last goddamn thing I do. Thank you. You don't even get to keep the money in the end if you choose the latter, since Arthur dies at the end of the mission no matter what outcome you pick. Number 7, The Plague Family, Assassin's Creed Odyssey. People that are sick, and my friend Kina is too. There is a blood fever. They say it's a curse and they need help from the gods. When a deadly plague begins to ravage a village on Kefalonia, Cassandra or Alexios is roped in to decide what to do about a particular family. They don't have any symptoms of illness, but the priest insists on killing them to contain the outbreak. Kausos was consumed by plague. We couldn't keep up with the bodies. It was spreading. We had to intervene. And you have to choose whether to side with the priest or the pleading family. Here's the thing though, with our modern knowledge of how diseases are spread at your fingertips, it becomes clear that even without symptoms, the family could still spread the plague. And, true to the science, if you let the pleading get the better of you, the blood fever spreads to the entire island. So why would you even choose that? A sickness has spread across the island. They say it started in Kausos. There doesn't seem to be a cure. Many have died. Malaka. That priest was right. Number six. Shoot the pedestrians or not. Infamous. A lot of food here. Enough to feed the three of us for weeks. Maybe longer. While Infamous might pride itself on complex moral decisions, some of the options are a little too black and white, including the first one Cole ever faces. When a food cache is airdropped into the city and gets stuck in a monument, it's down to Cole to get the supplies to the people, or zap the crowd and take all the food for himself and Zeke. It's more of a choice between blue lightning and red lightning, because aside from that, there are no in-game consequences for these actions. Now who the hell wanna eat this crap? Cole won't be weaker if he lets the people take the food, and he won't be stronger if he has it all to himself. He gets in Trisha's bad box, but that's about it. What's wrong with you? People are starving, and you're stealing the only food they've seen in days? I did it for us. 
to make sure we're taken care of. I don't get you sometimes. Number five, abandon Jericho. Detroit become human. Rather than become the android messiah Marcus is destined to be, if you fail all of his missions, either by accident or on purpose, Marcus will be exiled from Jericho in favor of North taking over. Though, he can choose whether to return to the ship and save his fellow androids when the humans attack, or cut his losses and run to save himself. If you choose to save only Marcus though, which literally goes against everything the game had been building up Marcus to be, you're treated to a brief cutscene making it clear that the android revolution never happened before getting booted back to the title screen. While there, Chloe the menu android tells you that your choice was a malfunction. Seems this choice was so dumb, Quantic Dream didn't even want to go through with it. I detect a malfunction in my program. This is worrying. Number four, Death Wish, Grand Theft Auto V. A, B, or C, time's ticking, pal. Beep, beep, beep. After playing through dozens of hours with the three protagonists, the final mission thread is given to Franklin. He either has to kill Michael, kill Trevor, or team up with them to take down the FIB once and for all. There's no real incentive for Franklin to betray his closest allies, especially not when the option to side with both of them for an epic shootout is readily available. Hey, they here. I know them when I see them, homie. They creep. All right, dude. The only reason not to do the third way is if you simply want to see all the endings. But even then, betraying Trevor and or Michael isn't consistent with Franklin's character. So now what? Now we keep a low profile and get on with our lives as friends. Well, do I have a choice? No, not really. Number three, leave Batman. Batman Arkham City. It appears we have caught our intruder. Teach her a lesson. Catwoman may not have the best moral compass, but she draws the line at leaving Batman to die, even if it does mean she gets away with all of her loot. But this didn't stop Rocksteady from presenting the choice to the player, like leaving Batman to his doom actually made sense. If Catwoman doesn't help the Dark Knight, Joker is able to take over Gotham and wreak havoc, causing untold horror and destruction, as relayed by Oracle over the credits. My name is Barbara Gordon. We're under attack. Joker's forces are too strong. My father's dead. Now everybody's dead. But the worst part is that even if you do choose this, the game just simply rewinds itself until you make the right choice to end rescue the bat. Figured you could use my help. You're right. I think I chipped a nail back there. You stick with the brooding. I'll handle the wisecracks. Number two, installing the FEV, Fallout 3. So, what should we do? Draw straws? The entire game is spent battling for control of Project Purity and the right to distribute safe, clean water to the capital wasteland. But if you're feeling pretty dastardly, you can go along with President Eden's plan to install the modified forced evolutionary virus into the purifier and poison everyone instead. Eden's reasoning is that the wasteland needs a clean slate, but the option comes way too late in the game to be compelling. It's not a choice with any nuance, since you're really choosing whether or not to have the good or bad karma, rather than grappling with what's the best future for the wasteland. Not to mention, it's at the ending, so the choice of karma doesn't even matter. Honestly, having an important choice like this at the ending just doesn't cut it. But the virus contained within soon eradicated all those deemed unworthy of salvation. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, escape with your friends or join Citra. Far Cry 3. I'm helping you. Jason Brody spends all of Far Cry 3 desperately trying to rescue his friends and escape the island to return to America. But when you get to the end, you can choose just to forget all that, kill your friends and go along with Citra. While it does show just how far into violence Jason has descended, it's still odd to be given the choice of murdering your own girlfriend or completing the story you've thought you've been playing the whole time. Even if you do pick Citra though, it turns out that Jason was never the hero he thought. Citra stabs him in front of the tribe. He should have really quit while he was ahead. I'm sorry. In the mood for more awesome gaming content? Be sure to check out this video here on Mojo Plays. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.